Hi everyone, it's Jim Goddard and I'm back with The Local Crank. I want to talk today about the passage of the Halifax Municipal Budget. Now, I'm wearing a scarf and a hat indoors because of the chill I got when that happened today. Our taxes are going up 2.3%. They say on av the average house, whoever lives in that, uh, is going to pay $48 more a year. Now, it doesn't sound like much, but it's not that alone. It's that year after year after year after year. So in the last 10 years, our taxes have gone up about 28%. That's a lot. My little house, in the time we've lived here, has gone from $1,000 to $2,000. It's doubled in 15 years. Now that's going to start to place a hardship on a lot of people. Now we heard a lot over the years about how we have an aging population, and that's true right here in the old Halifax Regional Municipality. Here in Dartmouth, uh, I can see in our neighborhood, we're starting to get some young families moving in, but it's mostly people who are older, uh, nearing the age of retirement, uh, and are trying to save for retirement, which is not easy. Most of us don't work for the government. Most of us don't have pensions. Most of us don't have the opportunity to uh, contribute to pensions. Most of us are left on our own to save what money we can, and it's not easy, and this doesn't make it any easier. Now, we're supposed to be, according to the mayor and the council, grateful that it's not 2.9%. Well, I'm not grateful. I think they should have done more, cut more, uh, restrained more, uh, and gotten to the point where tax increase would have been less than 2%. I would prefer to have zero, but that's just not going to happen. Our city council spends too much money, and it spends more money every year. Our expenditures in that same period have gone up almost 30%. So it's going to be difficult in that environment to be able to restrain taxes because the contribution of commercial taxes is slowing. The amount they receive in uh, uh, payments in lieu of taxes is slowing. The amount that they get and other income is slowing. The most uh, reliable source of income is property tax, commercial and residential. And the fact is, it's the people who live in houses, the residents uh, who pay uh, through their rent or through their uh, house pay taxes that keep the city functioning. Now I'm not impressed having gone through the city's budget documents with the level of transparency that's contained in them. There's a lot of charts and numbers, but most of them don't mean much. There's not enough detail there to really see what's going on. So let me highlight a few things I think are wrong. City employees make too much money. Not the people on the front line, not the lower echelon, the managers, the city administrator. They all make too much money. The firemen, and the policeman got a huge increase. The firemen got a big increase because the policeman got a big increase. Now, I don't know who negotiated these deals, but they're not in the interest of the people who live here. Now, nobody wants to say to a policeman, look, we don't think you're worth the money that you're making. Well, sorry, I don't think in a lot of cases you are. There are policemen, if you look at the sunshine list, which is the list of people in this city who make more than $100,000 a year. It is primarily firefighters and policemen. Now, we're paying for it. We don't have much say in how much they get paid because we are forced into this system where they can go all the time to arbitration. Arbitration never favors the employer, and in this case, we're the employer. So. You can be as pro-police and pro-firefighter as you like. The fact is, at some point, we're not going to be able to afford to pay. Now, everyone is popular uh, nowadays for crapping on the provincial government. But the provincial government is the first government I've seen in quite a while who stood up to the teachers union, to the government employees union, 
to the nurses union and said, look, we're going to pay you, we want to pay you more, and we're going to pay you what we can afford to pay you. It's a novel thing here to uh, think that someone should be paid according to the ability of their employer to pay. And as far as most people are concerned, the government has an endless ability to pay. And it's just not true. It's not true now. It never has been true. I want to point out a couple other things. The capital budget. I was listening today to Matt Whitman, who I rarely agree with, but he has some valid points about the capital budget and some of the things that they're spending money on. A new scoreboard for the Metro Center. The, yeah, the Metro Center. I will never call it the Scotiabank Center. We paid for it. It should be paid, it should be called the Suffering Citizen Center before it's called the Scotiabank Center. Money for St. Mary's Boat Club. Um, money for all kinds of stuff. But I want to also highlight the amount of money that we spend every year in tax exemptions and tax reductions for organizations. Every one of them a worthy organization. Uh, uh, charitable organizations like the Food Bank or, uh, yeah, the Metro Food Bank. Um, churches. Uh, yacht clubs. Now, I don't have much truck with giving tax reductions to churches. Um, I certainly don't agree with ta giving tax reductions to yacht clubs. Uh, yacht clubs are not, I mean, Dartmouth Yacht Club is a great organization. They're not elitist, not like the Royal Nova Scotia Yacht Squadron. But why should we be giving a tax reduction to the Dartmouth Yacht Club? They are a private organization. They own waterfront property. Uh, if they have to raise their dues a little bit uh, to offset paying their taxes, I don't have a problem with that. The same with the Bedford Basin Yacht Club, where I used to be a member for years. I never knew they were getting a tax reduction. I don't agree with it. And finally, the Nova Center. Now, City Council just agreed not too long ago to kick in another almost $400,000 to cover the deficit of the Nova Center. Now, the Nova Centers came online two years late, and in its first year, it is down $400,000 on where they expect it to be. This year, it's going to be worse. Next year, it's going to be worse again. Now, I don't want to be the person that says, I told you so, but like a lot of other people, I told you this thing would be a white elephant. It's going to end up costing us a fortune. And I hope the people that cause it to happen can sleep well at night. All right. A few happy thoughts for a Tuesday night. And tonight's election night in Alberta, going to be ugly. Going to be ugly. All right. This is the local crank. Have a good night. Well, that's not nice.